It's all about you guys, and um, I believe God has a word for you. Uh, someone said that instead of um, the righteous man is ordered by God. As believers, we should not take ourselves or our lives literally and thinking wherever we do, we good. So if we learn from, as young as we are, if we learn how to put our lives before God. I mean our lives by saying whatever we want to do in life. In the book of Psalm 37, verse 5, I would say, commit your ways to the hands of God, trust in Him, and He will bring to pass your heart desire. If we learn, if we learn how to commit our ways to the hands of God, we learn how to trust Him, that once we have committed our ways to the hands of God, that God is going to guide us through that journey and bring to pass whatever our desires are. So let's bring it back to this issue of our relationship. And we're not talking about marriage here. It is, it's, it's not about marriage. It's just a preparation to stir up something in us to say, okay, we all desire to get married. Are we all going to get old one day? And somebody is out there who is going to say, okay, I want to have you as a wife, or I want to have you as a, as a, as a husband. So in preparation for that, because like I say, in the multiple of cancer, there is wisdom. Where there is no cancer, people perish. All right, let's go further now. In verse 24, say, say, and God make them, and they say, a man will leave his father and mother and go to his wife, and they two shall become one. Now, interpreting that, we can say, okay, it's just about as being naked, a man and a woman. That they, they become one flesh. No, beyond that, beyond that, because that's that's the first thing that, that comes to us when we inst when we think about it. Okay, they become flesh. They are naked. They are one. No. The one question. When he and I did the um, icebreaker, she had actually made a point that um, the kind of person. The kind of partner that she will like, the characteristics of that man will be definitely a devoted Christian, a tall, handsome man, a great in communication, and compassionate, family oriented. And she said, race for me doesn't really matter. And um, so thank you so much, Imo. She's online. And I was just going to interject when Pastor was speaking. I understand that everybody wants these characteristics, attributes in a man, but as Hannah at because she nailed it right there, she said, yes, yeah, it's okay for you to, um, you know, go after good, wonderful things in a man or in a woman, but make sure that your point aligns with the will of God. Because Listen carefully. I want, I want to write things down and so you can ask questions. Unfortunately, we don't have much time. But we can continue this one. His sojourn in Cana, he came from Euro, Mesopotamia. But he saw, at this time, he sojourned in, in Cana. And God has promised him to give him the whole land of Cana. But he called his servant and said, Please don't allow my son to marry among the Canaanites. Don't be sojourn among them. We live about it. But don't allow him. Go back to where I came from and go and get him a wife there. And in verse 10 on the book of uh, Genesis 24, Bible says, His servant prayed unto the Lord that the Lord should go with him in that journey 
so that and show him favor so that he can get a wife, a sweet table wife. Thank you, sir. Fast. Okay. But see, and he said, O oh Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good spirit this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Now, this is the prayer of the servant, not the prayer of Abraham now. The Abraham the father had a good desire for the son. Now he entrusted that desire to his servant. And the servant had to travel. He traveled not just by himself, he traveled with other people with him and with ten camel. Ten camel. Camels. You don't know what camels are? And he they left, they departed. Interestingly, this writing that we get, I want to read this one very well. Don't just sweep it under the carpet. Interestingly, if they go to the field and they saw, they saw a damsel, a woman coming from afar to come and fetch water. And uh, the servant was saying, okay, God, any woman that I'm going to talk to, ask to give me a cup of water, and the person is going to agree. And not only agree, who we'll agree as well to give to other people that would mean and feed them. Let that person be the one. This is prayer. This is prayer. You see, we didn't talk about prayer before. All I spoke about was compatibility. But prayer is a spiritual exercise. Okay? Compatibility is human assessment. Something you see. You know, you see a well built, good looking, tall. It's like compatibility. That's your desires. Put it into jail. But when it comes to prayer, is it, prayer is a result of a conviction from a believer that before I do anything, I commit it to the hands of God. God will go with me. God will go before me. God will direct me. Any question? Any question? Anybody on the Zoom? Okay, um, I guess my question would be, so Pastor, you said that it is capable of happening today, right? Like, I guess in this case, someone will see a potential wife for their friend or brother or son and bring the wife to the family, and then that son will take her in or he or she. So if that's, if you think it's, not you think, but it is capable to happen today, wouldn't that be a little dangerous to, like, take in someone without doing like a background like granted Rebecca was um, showing great qualities in the in the beginning initially right um, I'm sure everything went well in, in those ages but in these ages like that that could be an exterior front where it's like no this, this person has great qualities great schooling family um, he's brought up well no background history of um, any bad issues and then two years later, you start seeing a different trend where like he's changing he or she in this case let's say for her she's now rude or she's not the best as far as um motherly skills or cleaning etc it's a good one now, now, now the key thing you need to understand that in the days of the bible in the days of the bible you are guided by the leading of the holy spirit now, however, look at the marriage of, of, of between the, the let's let's okay, let's concentrate on the marriage of the, this marriage we're talking about. Now, the quality, the character of Rebecca was well spread out. Abraham was not aware of it, right? Abraham didn't know. Isaac didn't know. But Abraham sent his servant to go. What I want to look at, look at how Rebecca display her character, her humility. Not all that duress. He, 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 she never knew what would happen. She wasn't acting. She had no mind that, okay, the end game will be I will become it. She did it because she loved to do it. She loved to do it. In the days of the in the days of the Bible, 
it is the parents who go out to look for wives for their sons. And not just the only disciples. We'll be here for some time. So in our own days, we I saw it happening that parents will have to go to family and tell them, oh, we see some kind of good flower in your house. Da, 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 da. Why do they do that? Because they want to know the character, the, value, the moral value of the family. So obviously that will be a threat in that family. So I'm going to take time. Now everything is now being organized. We don't care about it. So you guys are out there to choose for yourself. But if parents are involved, guess what parents are going to be doing? They're going to call him out or call her out. I see you around my daughter. I see you around my son. What shall do you go? Who's your pastor? Who's your dad? Who's your mom? What does your dad do? What does your mom do? These are questions you guys can ask. But these are the that your parents because they know that they may teach. Please man, that the word teach in your Bible. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husband, to love their children. That's five. To be discreet, just keep us at home, good, obedient to their own husband, that the word of God be not blasphemed. We need the women, we need people like Naomi to root. We need aunts and sisters. Who have been married? Who are who knows what it is to be married and say ma do not be carried away? Okay, we live in the world of a big difference, a world that is evolving. Just don't be carried away. You need to understand. Let your life be guided by the standard of the word of the Lord. Right. Because if you look out there, there's a lot of divorce and there's a lot of bad, you know, relationships. Uh, but you have to glean onto prayer and onto the word of God. It's a baby steps, okay? And I really enjoyed, I learned this today as well from what Pastor said. It's whatever trait, right? Any quality that I'm looking for in a woman, that man must also be able to possess, right? That quality. So if you're looking for a carer, a caring person, you have to be caring. If you're looking for a kind person, you got to be kind. You have to be loving. And no matter how the world push you, throw rocks at you, don't build walls with those rocks. Don't build rocks. Don't build walls with those rocks. Use that rock as a stepping stone. Okay. I read something yesterday that somebody was making a comment that a woman was saying that if, if anybody left their husband because of shitty, it's like you living in a city because of rain. Is there any way that it's no rain? Is there any way that it's no rain? <laughs> so your husband cheated on you and you have, you, you left in marriage. Now you look for someone who's not going to cheat on you. What well, if, if the person you end up marrying again cheat on you, you're going to leave him again? Get my head. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I was just kind of confused with that statement that, oh, if your husband cheats on you, leave your husband then you go and find someone else, what if that person will cheat on you? Mm -hmm. I feel like that person has every right to leave that marriage. Yeah, but so the way we, that's why we commit him our journey into the hands of God. Right. So you won't get into that issue of pitfall. So somebody is going to be cheating on you or you will be cheating on somebody. Like I said it before, before you started praying for a man, be a wife first. Put on a wife quality. Be a wife quality before you start praying for a man or a quality of a man. Because it doesn't make no sense. Because that's why God is not answering prayer. Yeah? He goes look at your character and everything the girl going around you and you are asking for all these characters. But he say, go and work on yourself first. 
We'll call yourself for me. Why we give you what you are looking for? That was not only believing in God, but somebody like him, not like you. Does that make sense? <laughs> let's let's deal with ourselves, stretching up our relationship with our Father in heaven. He knows the best for us. He knows the best for us. Trust. trust. And it takes years to build the trust, but it only takes few seconds to lose that trust. So you have to know, okay? One thing you have to realize is that if you cannot accept something, do not embrace it. Once that person, because, but I will not advise you to leave a relationship because of single one cheat. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is a, yes. You, if you're already married, if you're already married and some, because you will face that, you will face that. If you're already married, because you have to find out what led this person there. Well, how could you help this person? And cheating in what sense? Did you catch them sleeping around? Or did you catch them texting? Or did you, so you really, these are areas that you need to focus on. You have to go through counseling. So we're in the generation of dating and then relationships. So what do you guys think about dating multiple people until you find someone who you, I guess in this case, like Pastor said, are compatible with enough to start a relationship? Oh no, no, multiple people? Not one time, but let's say you're dating Tom for about two, three months, and you realize, eh, I'm not his girlfriend. We've been talking, going on dates here and there, getting to know each other, but eh, it's not working out. So now I take up another one month break, and then I meet Bradley, and then I just keep doing this. Or it just works out, let's say, the first two times I find somebody, or let's say it takes someone 20 people later to find their significant other. So, so, so dating and courtship is a different than entirely. Now, when you're going in into dating now, is you're making up your mind for an individual. Okay, if you're making up your mind for an individual, what we train you is to focus on that person until things get better that you can be sure to make sure both of you can get married. If you are still in the uh, planning of okay, maybe or maybe not, then you don't use the word dating or courtship. It's just still in friendship with them to study who they are. You study who they are. That does not mean you. You can be. They can be around your family member, but to you, you know. Please don't attach importance to this. I'm still studying this in the video. Tell mommy, daddy, people around you. Oh, this meet my friend, meet my friend. They ask you for that question. No, we just friends. But you have to understand that your parents have to be respected and placed in high esteem, especially pastors. So if you're introducing a boy to me or God to me, and three months down the road you're introducing another person to me, I will pull you aside and yank you off. I want you to have friends. I want you to be able to trust me. I want you to be able to bring your friends around me. And what you have to do in that family, study the person that you're mingling with. If you know this person is going to disrespect you, will not treat you right, why, why, why allow that person to even come closer to you? So you have to, you, 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 why allow that person? You know this person is not somebody that the, even your church will accept or your parents will accept. And you're still working with this person. This person yell at you. This person always disrespect you. When this person is with you, this person is talking to another girl. Like you cut them texting another girl. You cut them texting another a female or male. And then you want to introduce this person. You want to don't 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 accept things that it's a uh, that is gonna. So about that meeting, um, bringing someone to your family. So I was. I don't mind sharing this. I was in a relationship that was lasted five years, and I bought the guy to meet my mom and my family, and he became like a part of the family. So much so that I thought of him as a brother eventually, because it was just like he was around so much, right? Then we broke up. Now, fast forward, I'm seeing like, damn, I bought someone in the family, he's no longer in it. And it sucks, because I remember how we were all together, and now he's not a part of it. And 
that part I struggle with. I'm like scarred to bring anyone around because it, it, it is scary when you see how that person is with your siblings, with your mom. I remember when I was in college, I wasn't even around and he would be around in the family. So I guess maybe it's not a question, maybe it's a concern that I'm raising to say like, that's the other side of it that I know, of course we don't want things to end. So for example, like if you are in a relationship and you do bring that person to your family, I'm sure you want to think the high side, which is you're going to stay together forever. But in the event where things go lopsided because we are still young, I was 22, so yeah, I was really young. Um, now- Pastor Jim, I, I tell you, I'm going to talk to the youth, uh, Pastor. So maybe in the next one or two months, we're going to continue. We, we didn't even cover half of what we're supposed to cover, but I know it's something that we all need to, to, to get involved. Okay, Pastor James, God bless you, sir. God bless you. I see Pastor Mommy Ade with you as well on Zoom. God bless you richly. And, um, you know, to actually just close this, please align your life, your relationship with God. I'm telling you, above all, He will make you so happy. There's so much backings out there that nobody can feel except the Lord. Make sure. And you're not going into a relationship because you're pitying somebody or you you know or, or things like that just make sure that all that you do is just in line with god and i know that god will lead you he will perfect you and he will direct you and listen there is a good woman for you out there for those that are searching for a wife there's and a for good man for you god there's a good man for you out there so always remember that that god is creating you so you to be able to create and reproduce your own kind. So just continue to pray that God, please close that vacuum. Bring that person to me. That person that will love me, like Rebecca, um, Isaac loved Rebecca, and Rebecca, I, you know, cherish Rebecca. Just continue to make that prayer. Don't even say, I want the person to be tall, to be cute, to be handsome, to be educated, to be rich, to be intellectual. All those things are good. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, right and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto it okay and i know that you all because you are born and you stayed in christ you will not make the wrong turn in the, in the name, name of jesus, jesus. Amen. that's right i ask you that for jesus christ of god glory to god glory to god you are all blood and fire up who are destroyed the mountain amen god bless you and we come your way again I'll stay in the Lord. God bless all. He who finds a wife has found a good day and obtained its favor from the Lord. You found the harmony to the sun you say. You can do anything you want to call. You will have father and a brother and a lover. Your sister, your lover, your cover, your teacher, and your everything.